Okay, so how the fuck has this year gone so quickly that it's nearly Christmas? And even if it is, it doesn't bloody feel like it. It's pissing down with rain and just doesn't have that Christmas atmosphere. I feel like I must do something this year. Actually, I know what to do, but I think I need someone's help. John Luca, what do you want? Sean, I need help! Help with what? Uh, Christmas DVD review. Christmas releases? Oh, I know many. Uh, the Big Seven Christmas Collection, Three Festive Episodes, Thomas's Christmas Party, uh, The Christmas Engines, Merry Winter... No, never mind. Uh, 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 Merry Christmas Thomas. Uh, there's two versions of that. Uh... It's not a Thomas release. Oh, I swear to God. If it's a Bob the Builder DVD, I am gonna- Yes! So since I decided to steal Sean's idea of reviewing home media releases- What? You didn't hear a thing. I decided to review Bob the Builder home media releases, starting with- Bob's White Christmas, first released in 1999 on VHS and 2006 on DVD? What? Yeah, when it came down to putting the VHSs of Bob the Builder onto DVD, there's such a weird time gap between them. It's not like Thomas, where they produced one release on VHS the first year, and then the next year on DVD. No, 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 no. Bob the Builder first got their releases onto VHS between 1998 and 2000, which was when the first three seasons came out. And then, like, five or six years later, they're released on DVD. For example, Trailer Travis was first released in 2000. Five years later, in 2005, it was released on DVD. Some VHSs didn't even get a DVD release, like Scoop Saves the Day, Buffalo Bob, Rolly and the Rockstar. But let's actually talk about the DVD we're reviewing, Bob's White Christmas and Other Stories. This DVD features five episodes from Season 2. Bob's White Christmas, Lofty to the Rescue, Wallpaper Wendy, Wendy's Big Match, and Dizzy's Statues. So the way we're looking at this DVD is basically how everyone else looks at DVDs. Me and Sean are basically going to say our opinions on these episodes. So the first episode is Bob's White Christmas. To be honest, I thought not a lot happened in this episode. But to my surprise, I was kind of right. My problem with this episode is that there's not enough conflict in this episode. Sure, there's the scene with Dizzy being stuck in the snow, but that's about it really. Like, there isn't a scene where Bob is having trouble with the Father Christmas outfit. But with a lack of conflict in this episode, I still personally find this episode one of the sweetest ones of the show. All the team are together, getting ready for Christmas, and everyone really happy on Christmas Day. And for the fact that this episode proved well for the 20 minute YTP challenge in the form of Chuckle Builder. Also, the Christmassy renditions of the background music is pretty good. So overall, I give this episode a 5 out of 10, only for the fact that not a lot happens story-wise. If you're going to watch something Christmas related in Bob the Builder, it's best if you watch A Christmas to Remember. And I know that's a bit of a stretch since it's a special, but this gives off more of a Christmassy vibe as opposed to Bob's White Christmas, which is why it gets a 5 out of 10. Also, Bob sounds like Squawk in one scene. Lofty to the Rescue, a pretty stock standard episode. The standout thing for me of the entire Bob the Builder series is the voice cast. Every one of the main characters has a perfect voice, and the voice actors absolutely nail it. With the exception of Lofty and Spud. Now, I know, they're meant to sound like that, but my god, their voices are painfully squeaky and it sometimes takes away from the experience because of how annoying their voices are but despite that overall gripe i have with the series this is a pretty decent episode scoop is always a great supporting character and is really well handled here and also perfectly voiced by rob rackstraw you can 
can go back to the yard if you like. See if Wendy's got any other jobs for you. The fact Scoob is the one who reiterates how proud he is of Lofty just goes to show who cares about him the most. The episode gets a 6 out of 10. It's got a great message and this one shot of Spud hugging Lofty is oddly humorous to me because of just how out of scale they are. Wallpaper Wendy, probably one of the funniest episodes of the entire show. What I love about this episode is that Bob can't fix everything. We learn that he has a difficulty with decorating, so much so that he's the one that creates the mess, which leads to some pretty hysterical moments from Bob. I also like this episode because this, personally to me, is Wendy's standout episode. Because if we cast back to season one in Wendy's busy day, Wendy was just nothing more than another builder. But in this episode, we establish that she can do something that Bob can't, that being that she is great at decorating. I have no regrets giving this episode a 10 out of 10. It's great to see more of Wendy, Neil Morrissey's line delivery is brilliant, and the music used for each scene fits in well. Wendy's Big Match, a much better episode. Something that I forgot about before watching this episode is just how humanoid Dizzy is. I remember her being the most animated out of all the characters, but Jesus Christ, she's so humanoid she might as well be working a 9 to 5 at Tesco Express at the frozen section at 2am. <laughs> But anyway, it's because of this that Dizzy is my favourite character. There's something about her that's just so cool to me. Maybe it's the Mambo No. 5 music video that did it for me. But yeah, this episode is pretty damn good. It's very much a slice of life episode and those are my favourite. It's just everyone vibing and they're doing their thing. I love it. This episode's title is a bit misleading though, as Wendy has no big match. I mean, she paints a football field, a tiny one I may add, and then scores one absolute screamer. It's not much of a match, but other than that bizarre episode title choice, this episode is fantastic. It's funny, it's cute, and it's very relaxing. 10 out of 10. And the final episode is Dizzy Statues, another funny episode. The standout thing for me in this episode is Dizzy and Muck's friendship. It seems like ever since Bob's birthday, their dynamic between each other has expanded more and more, arguably on the same level as Bob and Wendy. Mrs. Potts is one of my favourite recurring characters from Bobsville, just for the fact that she's so batshit crazy to the point where everyone doesn't agree with everything that she says. But one of my favourite things about this episode is despite the fact Dizzy and Muck are obviously doing something wrong, they have good intentions and they're trying their best to help Bob. Actually, re-watching this episode for the review has made me appreciate the stop motion more than ever. Like this scene where Bob uses the pneumatic drill. And I only just noticed that in this scene, when Bob and Scoop are panicking, Scoop turns on his warning light as he's on the move. Again, I have no hesitations to give this episode a 10 out of 10. i definitely pick this episode over the other two Dizzy episodes, Dizzy's Crazy Paving and Dizzy's Birdwatch. Now, this is the big question. Do I recommend Bob's White Christmas? Only on VHS. If you're going to buy it on DVD, just don't. You're better off buying the complete season 2. Hey, thanks for reviewing this DVD with me, mate. Uh... I hope you have a good Christmas, and before you go, um, I'd like to review some more Bob the Builder releases. Would you like to help me? I mean, I've got loads of them. I've got, uh, oh, I've got, I've got loads of them. I've got, uh, I've got, uh, Teamwork Challenge, uh, I've got Speedy, Speedy Skip, uh, Trailer Travis. Mate, I reviewed Thomas DVDs. Uh, have a very Christmas, man, all right? Utter twat. Well, it looks like I'm on my own.